Hi Booktube, Lynette here. How are you all? I hope you're all settling into January as well as we can while we're still under Covid restrictions. Um, in this video I'm going to talk to you about the books that I finished in December 2020. I'm actually filming this on the 31st of December. Um, I have I've finished my final book of the year. Um, I know I'm not going to finish anything else uh, today. Um, I really don't have time to finish anything else today. I am not starting anything new either. I'm going to try and focus on one or two of the books that I had started but not finished um, in previous months and see if I can make some progress on those, especially some of the, the stickier ones that I've got that I'm struggling with. So these are the books that I have definitely finished in the month of December. So at the beginning of the month, um, I was under a lot of stress personally and professionally. So I was struggling a little bit. Um, I didn't read anything for the first few days of the month, really. Um, it did take until nearly the middle of the month for me to actually pick up and catch the reading bug again. But the first two books that I actually started and finished were the book that I should have read in November for the in Deathly read-along and the December pick for the in Death read-along. And those books are Judgment in Death and Betrayal in Death. As in previous months that I've talked about these, um, they are about Eve Dallas, who is a New York Police and Security Department detective. Uh, in the homicide division so every every book she has to solve a murder or series of murders it also follows her as she navigates her personal relationships with her husband Rourke and with her friends uh, within the department and outside of the department because she's never really had friends um, before and romantic relations um, have always been limited to the physical and not the emotional I enjoy reading these every month. These were no exception, as I say, every month. And I really do enjoy reading them. And I look forward to picking one up every month or most months. Um, like I say, where I do fall behind, I do try and catch up. So this is why I read Novembers and Decembers together. And at the point that I picked these up, they were just what I needed to give me the bite for reading again. And the third book that I finished in December was the December pick for the Just One More Page book club. And this book was The Christmas Tin by Roderick J. Robeson. This was a short book. Um, it's only a couple of hundred pages and I really enjoyed it. And it really did start to lift my Christmas spirit. I wasn't feeling it um, much at all during uh, the month of December. I think with all the restrictions that we were under and all the worry about you know, were we going to be able to see family? Were we going to be able to spend time with them? Um, I just wasn't looking forward to Christmas at all. And this book really gave it a boost. It's about Jesse McLean, who is worried that his daughter uh, is becoming too caught up in the commercialism that now surrounds Christmas. And he wanted to tell her a story to remind her that actually it's not about the, the actual presents you get it's about the reasons behind them and the sentiment behind them and the fact that Christmas is a time for family so he tells her a story from his childhood when things were tough for him and his mum and he didn't have a lot of money and he met a lady who told him her Christmas story um, and this story was about a tin that she kept some gifts in he was delivering papers to her and Every time he delivered a paper, she would take a gift from the tin and she would tell him the backstory of it. And in this way, he she reminded him of the true meaning of Christmas and he then passed this on to his daughter. Like I say, it was very heartwarming, it was very uplifting and at a time when everybody was worried about seeing family and friends over Christmas, it really did remind me that that is the important part of it. And that it's um, about seeing and spending time with those we love and hold dear and remembering those that maybe aren't here with us anymore to share those memories, um, but to actually remember them instead. So again, this was a fantastic continuation of my reading for the month and I'm really glad that Jess actually picked this book. Hmm. So 
after that um i could then pick whatever i wanted to read in the month i think i in my tbr i'd said that maybe i wanted to read where the crawdads sing i wanted to carry on with the voyage of dawn treader and um a couple of others that i've started in previous months but not finished um i wanted to try and end the year by reading some of those books that have been on previous tbrs but i hadn't gotten around to picking up yet or maybe had been reading in bits and pieces so the first of those that I picked up is one that I've started and I started it back in June. It's a huge hefty book so I'd been reading it in small pieces but I decided that actually I really need to get a move on and read it. I only had a couple of hundred pages left and that book is The Shadow Rising by Robert Jordan. This is the fourth book in the Wheel of Time series. It's following um, a large group of people by this point. We are following um, three young men rand matt and perrin and we're also following some young women nenave egwain elaine uh, min um fail uh, avienda there's quite a few of them now um and the first few books they were all pretty much all together but in this book especially they have now split up and gone their own separate ways um and in this book, we follow quite a lot of Perrin. He's gone back to the village where uh, himself, Matt, Rand, Matt and Egwene grew up and Nave grew up. And it's being attacked by Trollocs and by um, a religious order called the White Cloaks. And he sets out to rescue his village from those attackers. Rand has gone into the blight, into the waste, and he is being trained by the AL and he's following that part of his prophecy. And Egwene has also gone with him because she's going to train with the AL wise ones about dreamwalking. And Elaine and Nenev have gone off to um, another part of the world and they are hunting black sisters from the white tower which is another religious order uh, think nuns with magical powers um so it's quite a hefty book it's almost a thousand pages of story it's taken me some time to get through it but i finally finished it in december and i'm looking forward to moving on to the fires of heaven which is the fifth book in the series um not sure when i'm going to pick that one up yet um but hopefully i'll pick that one up soon um I can't really say very much more about the story because to say any more than that is really starting to give away spoilers. Um, like I say, it is one that I couldn't read all in one go. I did have to break it down into bite-sized pieces. Um, but it's still a series that I'm enjoying and I'm looking forward to hopefully it, um, finishing one day in the next couple of years because I don't think it's going to be in 2021. And then the next book that I finished is an all-time favourite and I've been saying I'm going to read this one for a while. Uh, it's actually got me to where I'd set myself a goal for, for um, making progress in a series this year. And this book is The Voyage of the Dawn Treader by C.S. Lewis. And this is one of my all-time favourite books. It's my favourite book in the whole of the Narnia series. Um... And I'm really glad I read it and it has cemented uh, my actual lack of wanting to watch the adaptation that came out a few years ago um, because I think they've changed some things in the adaptation and I don't like that. Um, but I really enjoyed it. Um, it's middle grade, so it's 9 to 12 um, and it is really suitable for that age group. I absolutely adore this series. This book in particular follows um, two of the children from the previous books. It follows Edmund and Lucy Pevensey and then it draws in their cousin Eustace. And they are pulled into the world of Narnia and they are on a boat with Prince Caspian who is going on an adventure to find some missing knights um, who used to serve his father. And it's all about the adventures that they travel on. Um, Eustace has, is not a very nice boy at the start of this book, but he actually has a complete turnaround. And I like the way that was done. It was quite nicely done. There wasn't too much trauma for him. Um, he just had to learn some lessons and he had to be excluded from the people he was with to learn those lessons. 
Um, and unfortunately, it's the last book that we see Lucy and Edmund. Eustace takes over the story from here. I believe he comes into The Silver Chair, which is the next book in the series. I don't remember reading The Silver Chair in the last battle, but I know I did. Um, but I think over the years, I've reread um, The Lion, the Witch and the Wardrobe, and I've reread The Voyage of the Dawn Treader. Um, but I've not really reread the other books in the series. Um, so I don't really remember much about the last two books. But again, this one gave me two to three hours absolute joy of reading. And I'm glad I picked it up. And I'm looking forward to moving on with The Silver Chair hopefully very soon. And the next book that I finished is one that I'm very sad I hadn't finished before I did my best books of 2020 video. Um, because this has actually become... A new favourite is one that I actually went to, as soon as I'd finished it, I went and handed it to my mum and then I've had to reclaim it from her so I can film this video. And said, mum, you need to read this. this. This is really, really good. And that book is Where the Cool Dads Sing by Delia Owens. I picked this up because if you've watched my videos throughout 2020, you'll know that in March I went away on a reading retreat. And some of the ladies that were on that retreat who had read the book were absolutely gushing about it. They absolutely loved this book and they were encouraging everyone else to read it as well. It's not the normal books that I would go for. Like I say, it is on the more literary style of um, books. But So it's one of those books that I probably would have gone and looked at in, in the bookshop, read the synopsis, put it back on the shelf and never picked it up if it hadn't have been for those ladies who were talking about it. Um, it's about Kaya, who is known as the Marsh Girl. Um, it follows two separate timelines. So um, the in the beginning of the book, we're following Kaya as a young girl. She's about seven or eight, I think. And the second timeline is then following when she is in her early 20s, very early 20s, and there is a murder that happens um, in the town where she lives on the edge of and she's accused of the murder um the murder is the, the person who's murdered is a young man who she became involved with in her late teens um and that's why she is being accused um but the early timeline is actually following her as she's growing up um, she's abandoned by her whole family and she learns about love through interactions with um, the young man who was murdered and also another young man who comes into her life. And it's just following that story. It's um, Jess over at Jess McGlynn actually read it and she describes it as a very quiet book. And I certainly understand where that's coming from because... You don't really realise just how drawn in you're being by the storyline. You are, you want you're rooting for Kaya the whole way through because, like I say, she's abandoned when she's very young and she's left with an abusive parent um, who does mellow out um, for a short time and then he does then go go back to um, his alcoholic ways. Uh, although she's learnt how to recognise um, his moods and to hide from him. So you don't actually get told about him doing anything physical um physically harmful to her <clears throat> in the description of this book at least not until the very end when her memories start to come back um early memories start to come back to her as well and yeah i was just i was i got very drawn in and before i knew it i was having to pick it up every time i sat down i had i just had to finish it i had to know that kaya survived I had to know that Kaya was okay. I had to know whether um, Kaya was convicted of the murder or not. I had to know who the murderer what actually was. And I really got drawn in by the whole storyline. And like I say, I, uh, immediately upon finishing it, I finished it about half past one, two o'clock in the morning um, because I just had to keep reading. And I immediately had to get a review up on Goodreads and up on Instagram. And then the next morning when I got up, I actually went straight out to my mum um, and handed her the book and said, Mum, you need to read this book. Um, and as soon as I finish reading this, I'm going to give it back to her so that she can then start reading it um, because she's nearly finished the book that she's on. Um, but yes, I'm, re I'm really, really glad that I picked this up 
um, and I'm hoping that I'll start picking up more books of this writing style in future. And then when I was researching which books I needed to pick up for the In Death series for January, I realised that there was a novella which I should also have read in December, and that book is Interlude in Death. So as I talked about at the beginning of the video, Eve um, Dallas is having to investigate a murder. This time an ex-police officer, an ex-homicide police officer, is actually trying to set her and Rourke up for a murder because he believes that Eve is now corrupt because Rourke used to be a criminal. Again, this book is no exception to the rest. Eve has to make nice with a new detective because she's not where it's under her jurisdiction. So she's not actually supposed to be investigating, but the um, police officer where she is allows her to help. And it just follows them as they clear their own names and find the real killer. Um, again, it was quite a nice interlude in between um, the books that I had been reading and the books that I then did go on to read. Um, because again it was quite a short book and I because it was only a novella and I got it finished quite quickly and it just kept my momentum um, for reading but it kind of um, fended off the hangover that I was getting from Where the Core Dad Sing as well. So then for my next pick I decided to go back to books that I had started in previous months and try to finish at least one of them before the end of the year. And the book that I picked up is Warbreaker by Brandon Sanderson. I started this back in early 2019 and at the time I was really enjoying it. It's a fantasy novel uh, set in his Cosmere world. Uh, currently it's a standalone but I believe he is planning to write more and the way it was ended um, there are a couple of threads of the storyline that could be picked up and carried on with um, very definitely so if there is more to come from this world um, specifically from the characters in this world then I will look forward to reading them. Um, it's set in the fictional city of Halandren and they are um, neighbours with it, another <clears throat> land called Idris, another city called Idris. One of the princesses of Idris has been betrothed to the god king of Halandren and the youngest sister is sent to fulfil this role when it should have been the older sister. Um, and it's how the older sister then decides that she's going to travel to Halandren herself to try and rescue her sister and take her sister's place as she should have done. But it's then about how she finds out what's been happening in the city and there is a war brewing by Halandran and Idris and the part to play that they all have in that. Um, and how the magic of the world um, in this world has a role in resolving that. <clears throat> uh, both princesses have lots to learn and they do and they um, have some fairly okay movement in their own characters, development of their own characters. Um, it, this is only the second book by Brandon Sanderson that I've read. I know he is a well-loved author in the fantasy community and I am looking forward to reading more books from him in future. I think I certainly have the Mistborn, first of the Mistborn novels on my Kindle to pick up at some point so I think I will enjoy reading more from him in future. And then my final pick of the month, um, finish of the month, was another fantasy because I was on a real fantasy kick and it is one that I started back in October when I was feeling a bit slumpish then um, but it didn't really help with the slump at that point. So I'd put it down again and I thought I'm really in the mood for fantasy um, after the ones that I've been reading this month so I thought I would pick it up and try and finish it because I thought I would definitely be able to finish it before the 31st. And that book is The Hobbit by J.R.R. Tolkien. Again, like The Voyage of the Dawn Treader, this has long been a favourite of mine since I was um, pre-teen. Um, I think pre-double digit age. Um, actually, I think I bought my first copy of this when I was 10, but I was first exposed to it when I was about nine um, by a travelling acting group who brought a production of The Hobbit to my primary school. Um, and then 
I've loved it ever since then. It is one of my go-to reads when I don't really know what else to read or if I'm feeling in a bit of a slump. Um, and although I wasn't feeling slumpish because I'd started it in October, it was in the back of my mind as one that I needed to get on and finish. And I really wanted to do that. So I made the effort to pick it up. And over the last few days, like I say, this is the 31st of December, I have managed to finish it and I finished it yesterday evening. Again, it's about a hobbit who has his home rudely invaded by some dwarfs and by Gandalf the wizard. Uh, the dwarfs are going on a journey to a mountain that used to be their home that was taken from them by a dragon and they want to take it back and all their wealth with it. They need a burglar and Gandalf has nominated Bilbo the Hobbit. Bilbo is not a burglar. Bilbo is a very quiet man who doesn't like adventures but somehow or another he gets drawn in and he off he goes and it follows them as they cross um, Middle Earth to get to the Lonely Mountain and all the adventures that they have on the way um, and like I say it's um, again it's about character development as well uh, Bilbo has some changes in his character he uh, he finds the burglar part of his um personality um he also finds the uh, adventurous side of his personality and he really comes into his own and again thoroughly enjoyed it um and really glad that i picked it up um it's one of those books that i don't think my opinion of will ever change um i think i will love this book until i'm no longer able to read um, so really, really glad I picked this up. Um, and it's an excellent note, excellent finish to the year. And yeah, I'm, I'm kind of in the mood for Lord of the Rings now, but, um, I've got enough big series going on as it is, um, big detailed series going on as it is. And I really don't need to read any more. Um, at the moment until I've at least finished one of those. So those are all the books that I finished in the month of December. I hope you had a really good reading month in December um, despite everything and all the uncertainty that we had around Christmas. Um, if you have please let me know what you managed to read or didn't read in the month of December in the comments down below. I'd love to chat with you all there. If you've enjoyed this video, then please give me a thumbs up. And if not already, please subscribe to my channel. I upload videos on the first and second Monday of the month. And on occasion, you get an extra video on the third Monday of the month. And I will see you all again soon. Bye.